The Film Verdict gives you Noir 360, hosted by Rashid Bahati, a global podcast that explores the impact and influence of black cinema around the world. Uh, you were talking about these two dynasties in Niger, and that uh, your family, uh, as far as you know, uh, Keita, it uh, has a lot of history to it. So share with us, uh, just uh, give us an overview of what all of that means for you. It's meant, it, it means... Um, uh, what it means, it means an uh, heritage and the things you have to protect. Um, a kind of, um, of uh, um, uh, comportement, <laughs> uh, a, a, a kind of uh, being that you have to do with dignity. Um, The, the, the assurance to know, the assurance to know that, um, that, uh, you have, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, power inside you. Yes. Yeah. Even if uh, all these kingdoms, empires, uh, uh, which was belongs to us, um, destroyed by uh, a lot of invaders, uh, um wide in various <laughs> uh, it is a it is a strong um it's a spiritual uh, it's not material it's a spiritual um spiritual connection. yeah yes. yeah and a, a lot of things we have to share uh for example a, a few few days ago in you know my Bonetti of course. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, with the New York African Film Festival, yes. she, she wrote to me and asked me, she's uh, ex- preparing an exposition, something like that, and she asked me if I can draw something uh, which um, is important for me in these days, so I don't know how to draw very well, but I just think about a, a calabash, a calabash I, 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 I use in my film, The Wedding Ring, um, uh, one of decor, decoration. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I draw it and, I, I, and uh, I explain it because she said to draw and to explain what it is. I say it's a calabash. A calabash, the calabash is one of the most beautiful instruments I've never seen in the world. And symbolically is uh, the, the instrument uh, we give to people the tra- who are traveling across the Sahara, across the Saharian countries, which are very dry, and we give water or fresh milk. And a calabash takes a lot of time to make. It takes uh, months because it's a fruit. You have to find it, to, to put it in the... to put let it grow and uh, when the, you see the size you like you cut it and um, and you prepare it i don't know how to prepare uh, to make a calabash it's uh, our servants who make the calabash to us and this calabash was the calabash the servant of my grandmother did to her for her wedding and i keep it of course and they and uh, now at when the time comes, I will give it to my daughter. And uh, and I just told her that uh, I was very sad. Uh, a moment, a few years ago, my brothers and sisters f- from African cinema, the directors, uh, when they see a film made of, with a lot of cliché on us, but made by one of us, because some of us are really... Uh, make films with a lot of cliché, a lot of miserabilism too. Nobody is perfect. And they laugh at them and they say it's calabash cinema. And once I told her, her, them, I, I'm angry we hate this kind of films. I'm angry. But why do you use this word? 
this instrument to say it is a Calabash cinema. I say you are too in the white people cliche who think that things which come from the bush is uh, not um, uh, not beautiful. And I, I, I told them, do you know what is a calabash? Why you say calabash? But since that, I think they stopped saying calabash cinema. <laughs> so uh, it's really like uh, delegitimizing the history and the importance yeah. of uh, the cinema. And that brings me to a question about, we're going to fast forward a bit. How did you personally to make uh, you know, I was um, I, I okay. I grew up in my country in Niger, uh, between uh, sometime in the capital, sometime in the savan, the Sahel. Mm, mm, the, the family of my mother, they are uh, Fulani and uh, nomads. And I stayed a lot of time with my uncles with, uh, on horses with the cows and so on. And uh, then after that, it's time to come back in the big town and to go to school. So I go to the white people's school. That's how I learned French and English. So I'm sorry my English is not fluent. No, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, and uh, then... After I studied, uh, we have a, a very ancient um, tradition in my family is to to go and um, continue the studies in France. So I was sent in France to study philosophy and linguistic. But usually all of them come back home. I didn't come back uh, yet, uh, early. I don't know what, why, what happened. I think that I started in I started to work when I was sad and to do, you know, students' works. When you how? How did you start to work? Students' work. You know, oh, when you are studying, you study and you have a, a, a small job, and you know, yes. and you so you enter in the society. But because if you just study, you are in the university and uh, and uh, your campus, you don't enter in the town. So I think that because of that, I have friends and I stayed in the, in the country. And, um, I started, in, I started journalism on French TV, uh, when I started work really after my, my degrees. Um, I am the first, the first journalist, the first woman journalist. Um, on the French TV to sew, to sew, to, to sew on the, oh, to thin, to sew. The uh, f- as it relates to you being the first, you're the, the first first to be seen on television? I'm the, I'm the first to be seen who, who is not white. Ah, oh. no. I'm the first to be seen, uh, 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 yeah, I'm the first. <laughs> You know, before we clarify, I I think that's very important, actually. But just how did you actually gravitate to journalism? What what made you say, okay, I like this as a job? I don't know what it happens. I didn't really choose journalists. I wanted to be a writer. And I I have some friends, journalists from Congo, from uh, Mali. Uh, They were older than me, and they were writing in a newspaper, and they start talking with them, being with them, and they say, oh, maybe to be a writer, I have to start to be a journalist. But I think it's the worst thing to do. <laughs> if you want to write, don't be a journalist. It's not the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I think that's why I started even writing in their newspapers, and then I have an opportunity. I would, I wanted to, to tell a story about, uh, uh, about our music, Mandingo music, a, con- a concert in France. So I, I, I tried to, to, de- to make a report on this 
I send it on a TV, they like this, they call me, and they start working there as a reporter. And then, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. first. Yeah. And, and, um, and I, 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 so the, I, I, I was talking about the reportage, then comes, a very great and uh, successful uh, pro TV program with a journalist who who speak about uh, the reports. And I was uh, a member of the team, and it was the first time a woman, you say female, <laughs> non-white, as a journalist, is seen on French TV. No. I opened this door. Was in Paris? In Paris? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. That's a phenomenal. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, have you uh, thought about your career? That's, you were one of the first. Have that been something that people have recognized and said when they say your name, Robert Tukater? She was one of the first. Sometimes. I, I, yeah, I'm not one of the first. I was the first. I was the first as journalist. Yeah. Sometimes even if they just say one of the first, you know, I uh, I would because I and and because it's very it's very hard and uh, and painful and uh, to be the first. Yes. So I don't when I am the first, I, I say yeah, I'm the first. No. Yeah, as a journalist, yes, but I think that to be a first, to be the first is too like a din it's destiny, because I'm the first for a lot of things. Okay. I'm not very happy of that, but it's uh, like a destiny. For example, yes. uh, Alessi, my, the film you saw in Cannes, we, we, we went on the red carpet yeah. together uh, for this uh, official selection. It was the first film from Niger to be in official selection in Festival de Cannes. And it was the first African documentary to be in selection official. In Festival de Cannes, because Festival de Cannes is a fiction uh, festival. It's not a documentary festival. The documentaries are very, very rare. Yeah. Well, you know, I do remember that uh, situation, and I think I had just met you along that time, and you invited me to come with you on the red carpet, and I was so excited that your film was selected, and it was just new to me. Yeah. Wow, this is incredible. Yeah. And uh, once I got to know that film, though, I love that film. Thank you. Because you bring out such a history mm. about the origins and the evolution of cinema, cinema in the, the continent yeah. of Africa and Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. and the Nigeria. That's what makes it so powerful. Could you just share with uh, everyone that's listening what Alisi actually is about? What is the Alisi is about uh, the pioneers of uh, Niger cinema. Then I discover their when I start working on them, they are the pioneers of African cinema. And uh, so Niger is the first country in Africa, you see, the first, encore, <laughs> the first country in Africa to have a cinema industry. Uh, in Africa, besides Egypt, because Egypt started cinema 50 years, about 50, 60 years, about all our countries. But besides Egypt, Niger have a, a, a small industry of cinema, but it's the industry of cinema. We had our, um, our financement, we have our um, uh, theaters, our distributors, our um, editing rooms, our camera, and they, 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 they start making cinema. They were about uh, 17, 18 years old when they started making cinema like uh, Umar Uganda, who is the first um, director to have a Yenenga, the gold uh, of uh, Fespaco. He is the first from Niger, Umar Uganda, with his film called um, Was Polygam, Was Polygam. And um, um, as you saw, the film we started to make are the Westerns with Cowboys. Yeah. It's uh, the film. Uh, it's uh, the film we started to 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 watch because the American cinema start coming, uh, start come in Africa in our countries uh, around the forties, 
I was recognized before as um, a journalist because I got awards from French CV too uh, called Set d'Or, the Seven uh, Gold. Uh, in um, uh, we got two uh, in uh, in the program I was telling to you uh, this program the, the team so I was well known because uh, too I was the first to to be see to be seen in uh, on on French TV uh, as a, a woman a non white woman <laughs> and um, you I. I, I I, I never say black because in my language we call us human beings. So I say non white. <laughs> it, it really, to be honest, the whole concept of race is a construct. It, it's uh, just something that was never there and it started being appearing where you can minimize people under the core of the Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And being African is not being black. It's, uh, black is just a color and it's a point of view. Being Africa is a, is a very, very long story. <laughs> and very, it's, it's, a, it's a culture, it's a spirit. It's a, and when you say just black, no, it's a... It's, it's broader than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, uh, so, so just... Uh, Please, I didn't finish. So I was well known as a journalist. I have the cover of a women magazine in Africa, in the diaspora. And then when I started to make films, uh, of course, my first um, uh, feature one, the it was a documentary feature, long, eh? was in Cannes. So I was recognized, of course, of course. Uh, well, uh, you have a lot to be proud of. Uh, 
talking with Rama Keita, who's a prolific uh, film uh, director, activist, uh, journalist, uh, and uh, very active here at FESPACO. I attended uh, a press conference uh, yesterday, I believe it was, about yeah. Thomas Card. Uh, can you describe what you guys are doing with that idea of uh, the former president that was assassinated here at the Pina Faso, uh, Thomas Hart Award, that you are incorporating into the festival? Can you describe what's going on? And the, the award, uh, the Thomas Ankara Award, is an uh, award um, uh, the the founder the the one who found found this award who in who 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 made this award you say the founder the fondateur uh well I'm saying how you say well, the, well, 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 uh, the, the award is in his name so no no the the people the men balufu bakupa oh. kanyinda yeah. from they're congo the ones, yes they're the ones that found this award voilà. yeah. he found he established, established. So this award was established by Balufu, Bafu, Balufu Bakupa Kanyinda from Congo, a uh, movie director. And, um, and this year I am the head of the jury of, uh, of this award. And uh, it's about, uh, you know, when Thomas Sankara was assassinated, we were divested. We were very young and we were divested. And, um, and, uh, me for the some years I say I will never put my foot my feet in Burkina Faso so I will never come again in this country then years pass and uh, maybe it's the sign to be it, uh, getting old you 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 are you you forget things <laughs> I and just once I I came for a film it is um just because of a shot, one of my films, we were in competition here. And uh, we came from Paris on a plane, and when we went out of the plane, all of us, we, we, we took uh, taxis and we go to the cemetery. It was about 5 uh, a.m., and we stay to the cemetery uh, medita meditation for Thomas Sankara, uh, sitting uh, near where he was uh, buried, and uh, and uh, then we start doing it at each festival. And you know that uh, a, a, a baobab, it's a tree. You know the tree baobab, starting growing up, a big baobab. Yeah, it was very strange. And one of our trip, we were coming. We we, we were we came. And we go, it was a tradition now, we, we went to the cemetery and uh, we came and we saw the baobabs were burning. Somebody put fire to the baobab. It was, uh, it was, um, uh, Kampare was the president. It's Kampare who killed uh, uh, Sankara. And uh, as this baobab were very strange, growing up like that, it, it became a very big baobab. At the at, at the cemetery, at the where he was, uh, where Thomas Sankara was, and when uh, and uh, and once um, Balufu said, um, we have to continue the memory of Thomas Sankara, his activism, his fight, and uh, we will make a award. He want to put an award and Thomas Sankara award for. Uh, it, 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 of course, it was after the coup d'etat, after when uh, the, the Kampaure, who stayed president after killing his friend, yes. Thomas Sankara, when he was put out of the country, um, he ran out of the country. Uh, so he did this uh, award uh, for the memory of Thomas Sankara and for the... Um, to show that uh, the image is important, the culture is important, and that uh, the Thomas Sankara spirit is in it. Uh. Yes, I, I, I just uh, think that is, uh, it's because now at the end of the trial, they've convicted everyone, 
that I think was involved, even though uh, Kipari, Blaze Kipari is still uh, in exile somewhere uh, in Ivory Coast or yeah. uh, Cote d'Ivoire. But uh, I know that this is a great time to bring that memory yes. and then store it within the Spaco, I think, uh, which is, you know, a wonderful thing to do and to remind yeah. the, the world yeah. that this took place this atrocity of killing this brilliant uh, young president of the yeah. country. He was 37 or 38 when they killed him. And uh, he did, Spaco is so popular now it's because of Thomas Sankara. He developed Fespaco, the festival. I, I knew him, I met him, and, um, and, uh, and we, we, we continue to go to the cemetery, then to go to see his parents, then until they die, both of them. And, um, and I think it's very important. I was very, very proud and, uh, when um, Baruf asked me to be the head of jury, uh, and I think they will do a very good job, and you'll see tomorrow night um, the the film which uh, which got the award. Okay. Um, that's it about uh, about this uh, this award of uh, of Thomas Sankara, and the, the conference, the press, what at the memory uh, memorial memorial of Thomas Sankara is the place he they killed him, and it is the place he's uh, now buried. No, no, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, uh, I know we could probably go on and on because there's so much that you offer and so many things that you're doing. But just as a brief closer, uh, uh, tell us about your recent award. I showed you the picture uh, that was in my phone mm-hmm. that I think your daughter sent it to me. Yeah. And what was that about, uh, just as a way of wrapping up our first interview, I'd like to talk to you more another time, but let's say for this one, because this is current uh, recognition of your talent and your ability. Uh, this award comes from Nollywood, Nigeria, Nigeria. which is uh, the biggest uh, industry now in Africa, and one of the three biggest in the world. Um, uh, it's a, a called an icon, West West icon, um, West icon. How to tell you? Uh, well, West African Icon Award okay. of the Year for culture and art. So I was the one who, with the how yeah, the laureate, the laureate of of this. Uh, Oh, I was so happy. And because, you know, Nigeria cinema, the Nollywood, it's a very big industry. And, uh, but they, they are in their country, there are more than 150 million. They don't need anybody to make their film. They don't need anybody to sell. They don't need, and they say, where, where, where did they find me to give me this, uh, this uh, award, icon award, no, it was very, very nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, l- the last thing I do, uh, no, I continue to do it, and I started a long time ago because I just, I, I just came from an, uh, uh, Addis Ababa. I was at the African Union summit, yes. and uh, and you know, I'm 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 doing the, I'm campaign campaign, yes, is campaign. Yeah. For making uh, Am- Amarinya, Amharic is uh, one of the of the official language of uh, of Ethiopia. Okay. To to make it one of the official language of African Union, and if you remind if you remind if you remember uh, the last film, the last feature one, I did the fiction the wedding ring, the wedding ring. Um, have us in the credits are subtitles in Amarinya. You know the the I you that. yeah yeah yeah. So uh, it's very important. It's our cultures, our languages. You know, uh, uh, a lot of people out of Africa think that uh, we have no uh, alphabet. We did the first alphabet in Egypt. 
And Amarena is the, it's a, the alphabet called Giz is the one of the most ancient al- alphabet in the world. And look at it, it's so beautiful. This is the flyer, the Oscar. You know, the film was in competition for the best foreign language uh, in the Oscar. In the wedding. Yes, yes, yes. And the... And, uh, it's a beautiful film. Thank you. It's a beautiful story. Yeah. And it's a beautiful film. And that's what, uh, in, in America, uh, most of the time, we don't get a chance to experience films like that. Yeah. Because the storytelling is so... The cultural approach to the story. We don't get a chance to see <laughs> films that take that deep of a dive mm-hmm. into a cultural uh, concept about you. We don't see it like that. Uh-huh. So it's appreciated. You made that film. Thank you. And I think that um, it's what I like to share with the whole, with all the world, is uh, my particularity, my story, my history, my cultures, um, because they are so beautiful. They are so rich. Uh, and I want to share it, yes, yes, because of the beauty. Because I think, you know, a great um, Russia um, writer called uh, Dostoyevsky uh, said in um, in the Idiot, the book, he said, um, "It's a beauty which will change the world." Yeah, only the beauty will change the world. I love that. And they definitely think that. That's a great, uh, powerful <laughs> note for us to close out this interview. I want to thank you so much uh, for spending this time doing. I know it's busy for you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Too. Taco, yes. I'm so happy I was able to collaborate together <laughs> for and talk to us a little bit. So thank you, Mama Duketa. And may you continue your successes. Thank you, Rashid. Uh, and everything that you do. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad I know you for so many years. <laughs> Thank you. how we reconnect. Yes, yes. This is great. The Film Verdict gives you Noir 360, hosted by Rashid Bahati, a global podcast that explores the impact and influence of black cinema around the world.